Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin Wa salatu wa salamu wa ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursalin Sayyidina wa maulana muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in Amma ba'd Faqad qala Allah ta'ala fil qur'anil majid wal furqanil hamid A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim إن الذين قالوا ربنا الله ثم استقاموا تتنزل عليهم الملائكة ألا تخافوا ولا تحزنوا وأبشروا بالجنة التي كنتم توعدون نحن أولياؤكم في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة ولكم فيها ما تشتهي أنفسكم ولكم فيها ما تدعون نزلا من غفور الرحيم صدق الله العظيم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إنما الأعمال بالخواتيم وقال أيضا أحب الأعمال إلى الله أحب الأعمال إلى الله أدومها وإن قل أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي رب يسر ولا تعسر وتممه بالخير وبك نستعي فتاح يا عليم اللهم ألهمنا مراشد أمورنا وأعذنا من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Respected shuyukh, elders, brothers, youngsters. First and foremost, we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And secondly, we send peace and salutation upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear respected brothers, Amongst mankind, within our dealings, it is commonly known that everything that happens after, it is on the basis of the first impression. Everything that comes after will be determined by a, person, by a person's first impression. By way of example, when you go for employment, the employee, he will interview you. On the basis of your interview, the employee will determine whether you are worthy of the position, whether you are worthy of the job or not, on your first impression. When you go to get married, the proposal on the basis of your first impression to the father or the mother or the girl. This will determine whether the family wants to hand their daughter, daughter's hand in marriage to you. And there are so many examples which we can put towards this and understand that everything amongst human beings it is on the basis of first impression. The first time you encounter a person, that will be the determining factor whether you want to meet him again or not. The way how he deals with you, his behavior, his conduct, his characteristics on the first encounter will determine whether you want to befriend this person, make him an acquaintance, make him an associate, make him a companion. This, should, this, is, this is common sense. This is something which we all understand. So amongst mankind, among, amongst humanity, it is all about the first impression. Our first impression to a person means a lot. It has a lot to do. However, in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is the total opposite. In the court of Allah, 
It is the total opposite. In the court and the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is all about a person's last impression. His final impression. This is what counts in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we all know that I am referring to at the time of death. The impression that you make at the time of death, this is what comes by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person can live his entire life in a'mal al-saliha. He can live his whole life in doing righteous deeds. He can live his entire life in the tilawat of Quran, in salah, in fasting, in giving charity, in giving zakah, going for hajj, doing all forms of sadaqat. But at the time of death, if that person does not go with tawheed, he does not leave this, he does not leave the world with the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his heart, then that person will be destined to the fire of Jahannam. So in the court of Allah, in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is all about the last impression. In our sight, in our, fashion, in our system, the first impression is enough. But in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is all about that last impression. This entire life that we are given, whether it is 60, whether it is 70, whether it is 80, whether it is 100 years, this entire 100 years, it is given to you and I to prepare for that final impression, for that final moment. That last moment of life at the time of death, that is the most important time of a person's life. When he is about to die, this is the most valuable, the most important time in a person's entire life. The time of death. So our entire life has to be in preparation for that final impression. For that final moment. When the angel of death, when akhirah, the hereafter, will manifest itself before us. This moment, our entire life, it is given to us so that we can prepare for this. That when the Akhirah will open itself to you and I, when the angel of death will present himself before you and I, this is the moment we all should be preparing for. Our entire life should be engaged in preparation for this. Ulama writes that Rather, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was asked with regards to who is the most intelligent person, man akyasun nas, who is the most intelligent of people. He said, "Aksharuhum istiadadan lil maut." That those that prepare for death the most, they are the most intelligent ones. So. Our entire life, my dear respected brothers, it is given to you and I so that we can prepare for that final impression. Now, we all know that at the time of death, success and failure will be determined by a person leaving this world with tawheed, with the shahada or not. If a person leaves this world and his iman, it is safe and sound, then that person will be given the glad tidings of Jannah, the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if a person leaves this world without shahada, then this person, he will be doomed to the fire of Jahannam. Not talking about those who are believers, but they did wrong, they did not repent, etc. All of that is aside. Success and failure, rather eternal success and eternal failure, it is all upon La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, since we understood 
that our entire life, it is to prepare for that final moment. What is this preparation? What is this preparation that we are talking about? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ibrahim, وَيُثَبِّتُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِالْقَوْلِ الثَّابِتِ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give words of conformity to those who make the effort of Iman in this world and in the hereafter. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu explains this ayah very beautifully. That isbat fil, isbat fil qawl, being given the word of conformity in this world, it refers to at the time of death. When a person is in the state of death, he is in the pangs of death, we all know that how our lives are. Many a times we falter, day in, day out, whether it is in the darkness of the night or the brightness of the day. We all falter, we all make mistakes, and we all know that this is on the basis of the effort of shaitan. Now, in within, within a day, a person, he falters so many times, he makes so many mistakes. Whatever mistakes you are making your, in your entire life, your daily life, this is 1% of effort from shaitan. 1%. And whilst you are all healthy, wealthy, strong, vigilant, very focused on your objectives, shaitan with 1% of effort, he still makes you waver like this. We still falter. We still short, fall short. Even though we are strong, even though we are focused, shaitan still makes us go off track. When a person is in the pangs of death, he is at his weakest. He is unfocused. Because the pangs of death, it is not something easy. So this person is at his weakest. And this person is unfocused. At that time, shaitan comes to a person with 99% more effort added to the one, makes it 100. 100% 100 effort shaitan, shaitan comes to a person at the time of death when he is at his weakest and he is unfocused. Why? To try and take his iman away. Comes in the hadith, Alama Kurtubi Rahimullah Ta'ala mentioned it in his Tazkirah, in his book with regards to the remembrance of death and the ahwal, the condition of Qiyamah, etc. That when a person is about to die, shaitan will appear before him. Shaitan will come before him in such a form, in such forms of people who are very dear. People that are beloved to you, and they have already passed away. So you, you, are, you love these people, and they have already passed away also. You know this. So whether it is your mother, whether it is your father, whether it is your grandparents, whether it is your children, whether it is your wives, whether it is your uncles, whether it is your aunties, whatever it may be, he will come to you in the form of a person that is most beloved to you and had already passed away. And he will come to you and say that, oh my son, or oh my nephew, or oh my child, do not die on Islam. For I have died on Islam and it had turned out to be the false religion. Die as a Nasara, die as a Christian. Or in another riwayah it says that he will say the same thing but die as a Jew, die as a Yahud. Now what strength do you have? At that point, when you see you are in the pangs of death, you are so weak, you are so unfocused, and a person that you love so much appears before you. The reality of Akhirah is manifesting itself before you. So that person is telling you that I have died already. This reality had already came to me of, of Qabr and Akhirah and etc. and etc. I have died already. 
and I died on Islam and it is false. This is what this person will tell you. What will give you that strength at that moment to say to him, to say to that person that you are shaitan and I want to die on la ilaha illallah. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about in the Quran. وَيُثَبِّتُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِالْقَوْلِ الثَّابِتِ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا Those who make the effort of iman, those who work on their iman, those who are conscious about the state of their iman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the time of death will give them that ability to ward off the waswasa, the whispers of shaitan, and to leave this world with iman. Wafil akhira, when a person goes into his grave, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him the words, the answers to the question in the grave. When he stands on the day of Qiyamah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will question him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him the right answers. But the effort of iman has to be made. And this is where istiqama comes in. The first point of istiqama is istiqama ala al-iman. Ithbat ala al-iman. To remain firm on one's faith. To remain firm in iman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in the ayah that I have recited in Surah Fussilat. Inna al-lazina qalu rabbuna Allah. Those who say that our Rabb is Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my dear respected brothers, for the few times that I've came here, those who have, were here would hear me saying it over and over. The kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is not an ordinary book. This book is very miraculous. Every nukta, every dot, every word, every letter in this book has something special behind it. Every, every construction of a sentence has something very special in it. We need to affiliate, we need to build that ta'alluq, that connection with this book. Then we will get that love and that understanding when we sit with that book and we sit with our ulama kiram. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهُ ثُمَّ استقام. Those who say that our Rabb is Allah. This is a very, very great test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my dear respected brothers. Rububiya has to do with sustenance. Rabb is such a sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that encompasses all the other sifat of Allah. And Rububiya, Rabb itself, has to do with sustenance. Allah is testing us. Allah is saying to us, that those who say that their sustainer is Allah and they remain steadfast on that. It is not something easy to remain steadfast on the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is your sustainer. It is not something easy. Once you come into this world, all the asbab that we see, it deviates a man's mind from the fact that Allah is his sustainer. When a child is born, after the 20 days and it starts to see, what happens? It sees its mother doing for him, feeding him, its father feeding him, grandparents feeding him, everyone is helping him and feeding him. So from that time, that child starts to see. Everything that it's seeing before itself is taking its attention away from the fact that Allah is its Rabb, that Allah is the sustainer. And when that child becomes more elderly, he becomes big, he goes to school, they start to teach him that for you to get your provision, you need to have, an, you need to have a degree, you need to accomplish this, you need to accomplish that. When he becomes a working man, he starts to think that it is my job that is providing for me. If I don't go to work, then my family will not be provided for. So the fact of to remain steadfast, to remain committed, Yes, commitment, it is a better word of translating istiqama. Remaining committed to the fact that Allah is our Rabb, Allah is our sustainer. It is not an easy task. It is quite difficult and it is very, very difficult. So Allah is telling us that He is our Rabb, 
but in a way of imtihan, in a way of an attest. Allah is telling us that those who say that their sustainer is Allah and they remain steadfast. Allah is informing us that he is our sustainer. How? Through an imtihan, through a test. Allah is taking our examination. So remaining steadfast on the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our Rabb, Allah is our sustainer, it is not an easy task. It is something difficult. The, com the amr, the fear of istiqamah, commitment, remaining loyal, remaining faithful to that which you proclaim, it is not something easy. Even the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was dread. He became fearful. He was very worried with regards to this. Sahabi comes to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and says, O Rasulullah, qad shipta. O Nabi of Allah, O Prophet of Allah, O Messenger of Allah, you have turned gray. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, says, Shayyabatni suratul hud wa akhawatuha. That suratul hud and its sisters and its likes had made me gray. Another riwayah gives more clarity that the ayah that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was referring to in suratul hud is, Fastaqim kama umirta. That remain steadfast as I have commanded you. Remain steadfast as you have been commanded. Istiqama. Remaining committed was something that it was so heavy on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he became gray. His beard became gray with regards to this affair. Today we take it lightly. Ramadan came, it went. All that we did in Ramadan, it, it's left, we left it behind in Ramadan. We did not say, let us take a portion out of Ramadan also. Let us understand, in the time of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa passed away, what did he stand up and say? Man kana ya'budu Muhammadan fa inna Muhammadan qadamat. That those who had worshipped Muhammad know well that he had passed away. وَمَنْ كَانَ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ حَيٌّ لَا يَمُوتِ And those who have worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is alive. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not die. So that I say to you, مَنْ كَانَ يَعْبُدُ رَمَضَانِ فَإِنَّ رَمَضَانِ قَدَمَضَى Whoever worshipped Ramadan, know that Ramadan had passed. وَمَنْ كَانَ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ حَيٌّ لَا يَمُوتِ And who had worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is alive and Allah does not die. Let us not be such that that which you do in Ramadan, we need to take a portion of it out of Ramadan. Let us understand that a, a, a sign an ishara, an indication of acceptance of our Ramadan, it is that which we did in Ramadan, we will continue to do it out of Ramadan. If on the day of Eid, the night of Eid, all that which we did in Ramadan terminated on that night or that day, let us understand that our Ramadan has not been accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything that a person does, and Allah accepts it from him, Allah gives him the tawfiq, the ability to continue to do that. So it is simple as that. So let us understand that what we have did, what we have done in Ramadan, I know we took that time out to utilize the month of Ramadan, but when Ramadan finished, let us not give it up all at once. Let us take a portion of that of Ramadan and let us keep it into our life. The salihin of the past, the pious people of the past, what they used to do, six months before Ramadan, they would prepare for Ramadan. And six months after Ramadan, they would make dua to Allah for Allah to accept the Ramadan from them. For us, three weeks had passed and we forgot that Ramadan was here just now. We already forgot about it. It is forgotten. Forget that Ramadan was not too long ago here. So what have we taken from the month of Ramadan? 
Istiqamah, steadfastness, commitment, loyalty, remaining faithful to that which we do, to that which we believe. It is not something light. It is not something easy. It is something difficult. But this is the demand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A sahabi comes to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and say, O Prophet of Allah, murni bi amrin fil Islam, that say to me something in Islam. La as'alu, la as'alu anhu ahadan min ba'dik, that say to me in Islam something that I will not ask anyone after you with regards to it. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said to him, Kul amantu billah thumma astaqim. That say that you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remain committed to that. Commitment, it is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from you and I. Time is almost finished. Let us understand this by way of example. A man gets married. As long as he stays committed to that woman, he does not give her a reason to doubt him. He does, she, he does not give her a reason to think that he is unfaithful, unloyal towards her. She will, as long as he remains committed, and he does not give her a reason, that woman will do everything for him, and everything and anything for him. She will even give her life for him. That is why she will give up her beautiful figure for you to bear your children. That is why she will stay at home and look after your children. That is why she will stay at home and cook your food. That is why she will stay at home and wash your clothes. That is why when you are sick, she will look after you. Because you have shown that commitment to her. But as soon as you, or I, as a husband, show some form of laxity, some form of deficiency in that commitment that was once there, I start to give her that reason to doubt my commitment. What happens? She starts to look at you with a different eye. She, to do things for you, she feels differently. And this is what? This is relationship between two makhluk. It is a relationship between two creation. And that woman, she feels so dread, she feels so upset, she feels so different when she finds a defect in your commitment towards her. How, it would, how would it be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we are defective in our commitment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When we are defective towards our plead, our, our, our proclamation to Allah that we accept him to be Rabb, we accept him to be Khaliq, we accept him to be Raziq, we accept him, accept him to be the creator, we accept him to be the sustainer, but we are not committed to that claim. How would it be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, she can feel that deficiency in our commitment towards her and she starts to act differently what would it be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah is aghna shuraka Abu Bakr radiyallahu anhu when he is asked of the tafsir of this ayah he says alladhina lam yushriku billahi shay'a those who do not associate anything as partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah is aghna shuraka Allah is free Allah is most independent of any form of partnerships. So let us understand what is this commitment. It is not about only reciting La ilaha illallah and finish. No. For that at the time of death, if we want to leave this world with the glad tidings of Jannah and no sorrow of dunya, then Commitment to this claim of La ilaha illallah has to be there, my dear respected brothers. Istiqamah. We have to remain steadfast on the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not half-heartedly, completely also. Everything, every ta'a, every obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it has to be done with rida. It has to be done with the pleasure, with happiness from our side. Do not take it as a burden. When you do it as a burden, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at you differently. You are praying salah, it is fard, yes. But why are you not doing it happily? This is an appointment with you and your creator. Why are we taking it as a burden? 
Last night we went to a program, the Maulana was explaining for the istiqamah to come about, for commitment to come about, two things has to be there. Love of Allah, love of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A person has to love Allah and love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And a sign of our love is that when we pray salah, when we fast in the month of Ramadan, we do it happily. We do not take it as a burden. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us that we remain steadfast, we remain committed on the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa akhir da'wan, alhamdulillahi rabbil alam.